Hi guys and girls, Raj here, back with another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to retrieve images from S3 buckets. So images are a little trickier than regular files because image requires binary media support. And I was searching the internet to do this uh, for one of my uh, projects and I couldn't find any good step-by-step -step walkthrough. And after I uh, did the project, I decided to share my approaches using this YouTube video. So in this video, we are going to uh, retrieve images from S3 using two different ways. One is using API Gateway with a Lambda integration. And the other way is uh, using API Gateway, but without any Lambda. We are going to do direct S3 integration. Uh, we are going to go over designs of both these approaches, as well as step-by-step -step demos that you can follow. Uh, I have given the link to my code in the description, and the timestamps are included as always for your viewing convenience. All right, with that, let's start with option one. So in this option, uh, we are going to retrieve image from S3 using a Lambda. So the user invokes the API, and the API invokes the Lambda, and the Lambda uh, fetches the image from S3 bucket and then returns it. Let's jump into the console and see this in action. So I have this S3 bucket created. Uh, the name of the S3 bucket is cats versus dogs. And I have the picture of my uh, dog shadow and my cat Max in this S3 bucket. Uh, so all right, so now let's create the Lambda function and then we are gonna go create the API. Okay, I am in AWS Lambda console. Click create function and you can give a function name. I named mine get image from S3. Runtime select Python 3.8. And under the role, you can create a create new role, but we have to go update it so that it can go and access S3. All right, click create function. All right, now double click this lambda underscore function dot py. So this is just a straightforward hello world lambda. Now go to my GitHub link that I have given in the description. We have this code get picture from s3.py. So you can either download or just copy from the code and then go back to the lambda, remove the hello world code and just paste the code. So what this code is doing is it is getting the name of the S3 bucket in a path parameter field. And we are also getting the name of the file or the object within that bucket as a query string parameter. So when we set up the API in API Gateway, I will go over how to set up this path parameter and query string parameter. Uh, it's just creating a S3 Boto3 connection and then we are getting the object from the bucket. And the important part is we are getting the file content by reading the object. And when we are sending it, the content type is set as application slash JPG, and it will be sent as an attachment. So whoever calls the API will have an option to save the file. And the body, this is the important part, is base64 encoded. So whatever was read using this file obj dot read is converted to base64 encode. That's how you transmit images because that's how it is different than regular file, right? You cannot just send the file as is. It is not gonna go. You have to uh, transform it to a binary encoded format. Finally, the is base64 encoded is set to true. All right, let's deploy this. Changes deployed, but this is not gonna work because the role attached to the Lambda does not have the permission to go to S3. So we're gonna change that. So click configuration. So this is like a new Lambda console. I think it just got released a couple days back. So click permissions on the left. And you can see this has access to do Amazon CloudWatch logs. So we need to update it. All right, so click this role name under execution role. Click this link. It should open up the IAM console with the role loaded. Okay, then attach policies. 
and then search S3. Uh, for this demo, I'm going to give Amazon S3 full access, click attach policy, and we should be good. If we go back to the Lambda screen, let's refresh this. Okay, now you can see from this drop down under resource summary, now this Lambda role has access to S3 buckets. Okay, so the Lambda is all set. Now let's go to API Gateway to create the API. I'm in API Gateway console, click Create API, scroll down, REST API, click Build, give a name of the API. I gave the name Get Image from S3 with Lambda, very verbose name. Click Create API, now click Actions and click Create Resource. This is where you generally give the name of the resource, but now we are going to create a path parameter. To create a path parameter, instead of just giving the name of the resource in the resource path, you include it within curly braces. So I give the name as bucket within curly braces. Under resource name, just put bucket without any braces. It's gonna give error if you try to put braces in the resource name. Click create resource. And you can see the bucket within curly braces appear on under the resource section and the curly braces means this is a path parameter. So path parameter is basically a variable that you can pass to the back end. Uh, so this is very similar to query string parameter. But things will become more clear when you deploy it and run it using Postman. Okay, click actions and then click create method and we want to fetch the pictures, so it will be get, click the tick mark. In the lambda function, give the name of the lambda function we created, get image from S3, and this is a lambda proxy integration, so API Gateway doesn't have to touch the header or anything, everything will be dictated by the backend. Click save, click OK, all right, now click method request. Remember, we need two parameters to pass to the Lambda. One is the name of the bucket, which is gonna be input into this bucket path parameter. So if you click request path, you can see the bucket is already here because it grabs it from the resource. Now, we also have to define a query string parameter. And the name of the query string parameter we are expecting, if we go back to the code, as file. So I'm gonna go back to API Gateway, click URL query string parameters, click add query string, add file. Click this check mark. And I'm also gonna make it a required field. So API Gateway is gonna check. And to enforce the check under request validator, click the pencil and then Click validate query string parameters and headers. Click the check mark. Now one more thing we need to do. Remember this image require binary media support. So now go on to the settings under this API. I don't go under this settings under the whole API gateway. We need to go to the settings of this specific API. So click settings, scroll down and the binary media types, click plus and just give asterisk slash asterisk. So it's gonna support any binary media type. Click Save Changes, go back to the resources, click Actions, and then click Deploy API. Click New Stage, give the name as version one, click Deploy. Okay, our API is deployed. So click this V1, click Get, so you can see the invoke URL also has this curly braces. And that's how you know it is expecting the name of the bucket in this field. And it is gonna pass this field to the backend. All right, so let's try to invoke this. I'm gonna copy the link address, open my postman. In the postman, I'm gonna paste the link Okay, the curly braces come as this percentage seven, so I'm gonna delete this. So whatever I put here will be assigned to the path parameter bucket. 
So I'm going to give the name of my S3 bucket cats versus dogs. And then I have to pass my query string parameter, which is file equal to, let's get picture of my dog first, or shadow.jpg. All right, let's click send, and this should work. Okay, we got the binary media stream, and you can see save response. We can save this to a file, have our shadow return. Click save, and then let me open the file. There you go. This is a picture of my two-year-old German Shepherd. So, all right, so this is how you retrieve the image using API and Lambda. But remember, if you are just fetching an image from S3 bucket, since S3 is a AWS service and API Gateway is the native API management service, you don't need a Lambda in between. API Gateway can directly retrieve images from S3 or save images uh, from this bucket. This is also faster, cheaper, and involves less code. All right, so let's do this in step-by-step -step demo as well. So to do this, we are gonna upload a Swagger file. So AWS gives these access binary files in S3 through an API Gateway API. It is little screwy though, because um, it doesn't say what to do with a couple of the things. For example, uh, the role, and also there is a section with this Amazon AWS.com. So I'm going to show you guys and girls. So with this link, and I'm gonna give this link uh, in the description, copy the whole thing, and then open it up in your favorite IDE. So for me, I'm gonna open it up in Visual Studio Code. Save this as JSON. All right, so we have to change couple of places. So if we scroll down, so see there is a role here. So this is the role that the API assumes. Uh, so this role you need to create and you have to give S3 access. So let's do that. Let's go to IAM, click roles on the left, click create role, click API gateway, click permissions. So you don't have the option to add more policies here. So you have to attach inline policies. But for now, click next review give a role name, API S3 image role, click create role. Now we have to create a policy. I'm gonna click this policy, open in the new tab, click create policy, click JSON, and you can just paste in this or type in this JSON. So this action for this demo, I'm giving it to all the services, which is not advisable. Uh, but you can specifically give s3.star, give the bucket name, all that stuff. Click tags, click review, give API gateway admin policy. Yeah, I'm being a little lazy here because I plan to do more demos on API gateway so that I don't have to go change the policy every time. Okay, click create policy. Okay, go back to the role and then get the API S3 image role that we just created. Now click attach policies and then type in a part of the name of the policy we created. We gave API gateway admin policy. So select this, click attach policy. Okay, our role is created with proper policies. Now this role ARN, copy this role, go back to the JSON and Replace this with the role. Scroll down and then you have to change this API gateway integration as well. Just paste this. Okay, scroll down a bit more. And the servers, you don't need to keep this. You don't need to have this API gateway domain and all that stuff for this demo. So you can just remove this. Okay, so now we are going to upload this to our API Gateway API. So copy this uh, whole JSON, then go back to API Gateway. All right, go back to APIs, click Create API, REST API, and then click Import. 
and here you are going to paste the OpenAPI 3 file. So this is a really great way to export your APIs or import APIs without going through console. So this is gonna create the API components. So click import. Okay, you can see it created the resources, one for get and one for put. And if you go to the settings, go down, you see it put two different binary media types, JPEG image type and the octet stream. Uh, go up, I wanted to show you one more thing. So how is this API getting the name of the bucket and the object? If you go to method request, click URL query string parameter. So it is getting everything in the key, right? So it's not getting in two separate parameters. Like the last example we saw, bucket name is going to the path parameter bucket and, query, and the object name was going to query string parameter file. In this case, everything is coming to the key. All right, so click Actions and then click Deploy API. To create a new stage, V1, click Deploy. All right, our API is deployed. Let's get, copy this link, go back to our Postman. Now the query string parameter. So this time we are going to pass the name of the bucket and the name of the object that we want to fetch separated by front slash. So key equals to cats versus dogs slash max dot jpg. Click send and this time it returned the picture of my cat max. All right, so now let's try the put part, right? All this time we have been retrieving image from S3. Uh, so now let's try to post a picture uh, of a animal that my daughter thinks is better than cats and dogs. So I'm gonna copy this open another tab, change this get to put, paste the URL, and this time in the query string parameter key, you have to pass the name of the bucket that you want to save the image in, as well as the name of the object. So we are passing the same bucket, cats versus dog, and it should be saved with better than cats and dogs.jpg. And now go to body, select binary, and then you need to select the file that will be uploaded. So for this, I select better than cats and dogs.jpg from my local desktop. So if I go to S3 real quick before I execute this API, so currently there are only two objects. Uh, so let's execute our API. Click send. Status is 200 okay. Go back to S3 bucket, refresh. So now you can see we got another object better than cats and dogs.jpg. So now let's retrieve this. Let's go back to the get, and instead of sending a max.jpg, we want to say better than cats and dogs.jpg. Click send. There we go. This is a unicorn, my daughter's favorite animal. She thinks it's better than any other animal. All right, this is how you save or retrieve images from S3 bucket with API Gateway. Uh, in two different options. One with Lambda, another without Lambda. If you like this video, uh, smash that like button, uh, click subscribe. All the likes and subscribe really help this channel grow. We are almost at 10,000 subscribers. Can't wait till we cross that milestone. All right, with that guys and girls, uh, I end this video. I'll see you guys and girls in the next video. Bye.